Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. Today I have an easy and delicious Dutch oven dish for you, so stay tuned. Cool winter day here, hunting season's winding down here in Florida, and I know you guys, hey, all across the country, you might have got yourself a good game animal this year. This dish works just as well with any kind of animal. Today we're going to do it with a nice Porter Road beef shank, but it also works great with your deer, moose, whatever you got, okay, is going to work just as well in this dish. So. Get your shanks, or let's make something delicious with them. So today we're going to be doing this in the campfire over uh, on the Dutch oven. Today I'm going to use my 12 um, for the amount I have today. Use what you have, all right? Uh, just adapt your amount of ingredients to what you have. 10 would probably work just fine, okay? So let's go over the ingredients real quick. I'll try to leave you a list of them either in the description or at the end of the video. We got our shank. Again, use whatever shank you got. We have one nice dry aged one from Porter Road Meats right here. Um, I specifically asked them for cuts like this that would go good for uh, braising and Dutch oven. We got a, a sweet onion. I got some Killer Hogs AP seasoning. That's salt, pepper, and garlic if you don't have that. I got some better than bouillon beef bouillon. I got an acorn squash and uh, please stay tuned to the end to see what we do with that guy. I got a couple carrots. I got some small red potatoes. I got some celery. I got a lime or you can use lemon. I got an orange. I got some uh, chopped garlic right there from some celery. I'm seen that. And um, I got some ground rosemary. I took regular rosemary, put it in a spice grinder, busted it up a little bit more. And uh, that's other than a little bit of olive oil, that's pretty much all you're gonna need. I'm gonna grab my Dell Strong Knife there. If you like to check out some Dell Strong Knife products, I'm gonna leave you that link in the description box below there. So these Porter Road meats, they come double packed. All right. So they keep for you real well in the freezer. I'm gonna go ahead and gently take that guy out. I'm gonna wipe my hands off here. I'm gonna kind of blot it with a paper towel. Skinny of that juice off of it. As you guys always know, and the reason why the shanks are like the last part of the animal to get ate is because they're tough. So we're gonna help that process out in two ways. First, by the way, we cut it and trim it here. And second of all, by the way we cook it, we're just gonna be slowly and for a while. But believe me, that bone in that shank has a lot and lot of flavor. You can see it right here, and that is the marrow. And that marrow inside that bone is what it's gonna give this dish so much flavor. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna kinda cut it in both directions so that's going to be breaking up those tendons and all those other fibers inside that meat is what it makes it tough. I mean, this is the leg of the animal, so, you know, this is what he uses to run the hell away from you and other predators. And, uh, you know, it's a strong muscle. But doing this step right here is going to really help reduce the cooking time for one and uh, two it's going to help us remove the meat from the bone when it's done and three it's going to give a place for all this beautiful seasoning we're fixing to put on it right now so let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to start just putting our salt pepper and garlic in there and that's going to get down all those crevices that we just made with a knife 
help to flavor our meat and, and remember you, you don't really have to worry too much about overdoing this because this is all going to break down in stock in the end I'm trying to get you an angle there but there's the rosemary and while our fire is getting stoked back up again it's going to kind of you know work that, that rosemary herb in there and this is going to be you know one of them things just going to put it over the top let's kind of massage it all in there try to pick up any seasoning you got left on your board so it's windy cold today it's one of them rare times in Florida where I hadn't got out of the 50s all day and uh, the wind just blows so hard it blew my sunglasses off the table over there all right but there is your shank ready to go of course if you're going to use a uh, venison probably going to need a couple of them like this or however, however many people you got to feed adjust accordingly Let's go ahead and get our uh, Dutch oven preheating over here. Still got that fire burning for a while now, but let's go ahead and get the pot just getting hot. That burns down just a little bit more. We'll get her right up on top of the fire and get it nice and hot to sear that guy off. All right, so we got the Dutch oven set up with the tripod and trammel. I'm gonna go ahead Got a little oil in the bottom of the pot. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that guy down. Start searing him off. All right, so it's been about 45 minutes since the things went over there on the grill. And remember, I teased you about this acorn squash. And the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and just take this. This one got kind of a pointy tip on it. We want it to be able to sit up like that. Okay? We want it to be able to sit. And the same with the other side. So I'm going to take a minor slice off of that side I want it to be able to sit now I'm going to try to divide it between the two halves and I'm going to go right down there through that guy and you can see those seeds inside all right my bowl sit it's going to be a bowl so I wanted those two sides to be kind of parallel with each other Go ahead and give that one a little carve. Kind of sits level. Same with this guy. Take a little bit of that off, kind of sit level. Alright, let's go that over there. Now we're going to take these seeds out. Just using the tablespoon. Don't worry about the stringy bits, just get the seeds out. Stringy bits are going to make it even more delish. Tablespoon. They come out really easy. Alright. Let's make sure we get them all out. If you like toasted seeds, save those or plant them, which one we might. There is our two bowls. So at this point, Got them ready. Oop, got a little piece of his 
I got stuck seed in there. Let's go ahead and get him out. Just a little punch work there. All right, we got him out. I'll spray him with olive oil real good. All right, we'll give him a little seeding. Some killer hogs. Salt, pepper, and garlic. So I just lifted up, sprayed this aluminum foil with butter, all with the butter or butter spray or olive oil, whatever you want to use, some kind of oil. And we're just gonna wrap them up nice and tight because this guy is gonna cook right on the coals. Do the other one exactly the same way. It's been about an hour and a half that uh, meat going up in there. So we're going to set the lid aside. Got a nice broth going down there. May have to put a little bit more moisture in. Then dump in our Miroquois plus potatoes. Let's grab our tongs here real quick. Make sure all that's down into it's about a right amount of broth. And that's getting her shanks getting really tender. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stick her lid back on. Just been putting small pieces of wood underneath it just to keep that heat up and keep it at a simmer. So right after we're done putting in the veggies. I'm gonna go ahead and spread these coals out just a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and put our acorn squash halves in a little bit full right there on the coals. Go ahead and take that lid off. Those veggies have been in there for a little while. Go ahead and pour in a little cornstarch. Help thicken up the whole thing. So we're going to go ahead and take these acorn squash we cooked right over there on the coals. I'm going to go ahead and take them out. And those are going to be a beautiful bowl. Look at that. Okay. A beautiful bowl for our gravy. Let's go ahead and wipe that up a little bit. Those are done perfectly. So... We want to go ahead and just put that in the middle. Do this whole dish right in the air corn squash bowl. The meat, the gravy, the veg, and all of that right there in the acorn squash bowl. I'm going to go ahead and give it just a little bit of our scallions, a little bit of orange zest, give that a little sprinkle over the plate and the dish, a little squeeze of the lime just to brighten it up. There you go. The back was gourmet. Easy Dutch oven dish using your shanks from whatever it is that you got a shank from. It's super, super awesome.
So Mrs. Backwood's going to give it a try and let you know what she thinks about it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, you know those uh, emoticons they have on Facebook? Lip smacking good. Okay, if you say so. Mm-hmm. I say so. <laughs> so thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. If you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there. To subscribe to our channel, you can do it right over there for another great Backwoods Gourmet video is going to be right over there and for a whole playlist of cast iron and Dutch oven cooking, it'll be right up there. We'll see you next time.